then comes friends and then your personal time. So we are going to talk about the work life that we are all having. And today's topic that we have is navigating the relations between freelance and entrepreneurship or regular job. None of which are bad, let me clarify that at the very beginning. And we have a fantastic panel over here, Rahul Singh as you already have met, Didisha who is into a job segment and Arun, Arunda, my Arunda who is a freelance developer. So let's start with the question that everyone has, right? What is, is, is it bad to have a job over freelancing or entrepreneurship? That is the first question directed to Vidisha. So a lot of people think that uh, this is an inferiority complex that works in a lot of people that I will have to have a some self-employed, right? We have, I have to do something of my own. And a lot of people downgrade the people who are doing job actually. Like, entrepreneurs know how to direct those people, but this ordinary concept, misconception I would say, is prevalent among a lot of people. So Vidisha, I will just direct the question to you. How the job sphere and how, why should no one consider it as an inferior sector? Hi, first of all, good afternoon everyone. So, as he has asked an important question, uh, why do, why should we not consider job as looking at it like it's a bit inferior compared to freelancing or entrepreneurship, let's say. So, I have been working for around three years now. Uh, this is all my personal experience. What I feel is that when we come to a job, we, first of all, it's not inferior because whatever you are going to learn as a freelancer or an entrepreneur, let's say I'm a web developer. So from the perspective of a web developer, let's say, whatever I'm going to learn as a freelancer, working on various projects, so on and so forth, the same amount of knowledge which I can also gain in a job. That's, that is a knowledge part. Now, there is a little bit advantage, I would say. If you're a single freelancer, sometimes a lot of things need to be self-learned. Right? But when you come in a job, most of the time we have our superiors. Right? So, um, let's say I'm writing a code that's good in my eyes. But in order to make it optimized, make it the best, I have someone who can actually guide me. Right? So, in that way, I can say that, yeah, you're learning, coming to knowledge and learning, job is pretty good. Now, one important thing that people do miss out a lot of times is that they might come up and say, hey, I mean, in my job, I need to work for, for this hours. And let's say I'm a freelancer or an entrepreneur. In that scenario, I have a lot of free time. Not really. Not always, I would say. Because let's say you are working. You're sh it's the wrong conception that, you know, if I'm a freelancer, I can work as per my time. With today's culture, job culture, I mean, there is so much, so many remote companies. This is not the scenario, essentially. You can work as far as your time, your preferences, as long as work gets completed. So, I don't think that someone doing a job should be looked at in a different way. Everything has its pros and cons. These are some of the pros that you can have while being in a job. Thank you. That was a very really nice perspective, Vidisha. Really. Like, uh, a lot of people think that uh, having superiors on my head is gonna, they're gonna nag us, okay? Micromanagement, that we call it, right? So it is not like that. If you have a supportive senior above your head, you are gonna get a right direction right from the very bottom, right from the start of your career. So a lot of people here are young minds, they are uh, going to be, get freshly graduated. Right. They should understand this fact that having a senior on the head is only bad when the senior is bad. Okay? If the senior is good, like and there is a common saying that people do not uh, leave jobs, they leave bad managers or bad bosses. Right? So that's a very good point that Vidisha have brought. Now, coming to that same point that having a uh, senior on your head, 
freelance is not something like that. But it is something different. You have to be accountable for what you are doing. Right, Arunda? So, uh, continuing that question, I would like to ask Arunda, how, is, how do you think this freelancing is different from a job? While considering this senior boss thing, then how do you manage your time as a freelancer? I do not think it's very different to uh, jobs. You, if you, even if you do freelancing, you will have a team to work with, and uh, in most cases, so there will be very rare cases where you get a single project that you need to handle single handed. So in most cases, you will have a team to work with. The only advantage you get is that you get the flexibility of working hours, whenever you want, wherever we will, uh, you can work on it. Uh, apart from that. Uh, you can choose your project. That, that's the best advantage of being a freelancer. You can choose what you want to work on. It's, it's, uh, if you are an employee of company, the company brings in the project, so you have to work on that. But in case of freelancing, you can choose which project or which clients you want to work with. That's the advantage of uh, being a freelancer. That is, you know, that is a very big advantage. And continuing uh, with you, I have a very interesting question that recently actually happened in Wipro. Uh, a lot of people have heard moonlighting, right? So moonlighting was actually a concept that is you are working for a company and at the same time you are working with some other company who are act sharing the interest or competition or is a direct competition of that company. Right. So, do you think if you are associated as a freelancer with a, 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 a company and you are working with other company as a freelancer who is a direct competitor, is it considered moonlighting for you or is it considered unethical to you as a freelancer? See, if you are talking about a regular job, then you are already signing a contract that you are not going to work with any other company or you are not going to work on a project similar to the business they are doing. So, that's moonlighting if you are doing something. But as a freelancer, you are not signing any contract, so you are free to choose. You want to work on five projects or ten projects, that's your piece. So that's another advantage that you brought up Great. for being a freelancer. Exactly. So, Vidisha, you think like a lot of jobs, right? But this, this young mind, they might be doing the job. When I signed up for my first job, it was in uh, probably in Alkin, Sikkim, which is a very costly. Uh, state, right? You don't get uh, rice, dal, like Bengali foods over there, okay? It was very hard. I have to survive on Momo for seven days straight, okay? And that was a very tough nut to crack. I was, I, I, I was, I lost half of my weight. And anyways, I was going off to that. So, in that case, like for, I am, I was earning very less and I have to find some other things to do, to earn, to sustain. So, do you think as a uh, person who is employed, they should be able to work somewhere else as a freelancer? Uh, that's a very nice question, I must say. Um, so what I feel is that legally, if you look at the contract, a lot of times companies sign you with a contract, with a contract that you cannot be working, uh, the contract says that, that is, you cannot be working anywhere that clashes with our interest. Now this is a very debatable term. What is our interest here? I mean, let's say today I am working with Hotstar. Tomorrow I, on the back, starts working with Geo Cinema. What happens there? That's essentially moonlighting. You are not allowed to do that. But, at the same time what I feel is that, like, your, like the scenario you mentioned, so we need to earn money. So, sometimes what we need to do is, out of the work hours, usually the weekends are available, right? Technically, you should not be working with another company because you might get fired if the your original company gets to know. But what you can do is you can take up projects that are, let's say, one time for a fixed period of time, freelancing sort of job that do not have a very specific contract. In those cases, I think we can still have flexibility. And um, I would like to bring this point as well over here. Today, a lot of people who have grown in the job industry who are working with reputed organization, they are teaching students with minimal cost. Now think about the scenario where I'm getting a course from an experienced professional with minimal cost and like me, a lot of students are registering. 
So that can be also your source of income, right? So YouTube is something like that, but I don't know the details. I've never been a YouTuber. Maybe one of you can teach me one day. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we can earn like this as well. But just be careful of the, you know, clauses in the job. Thank you, Vidisha. Now I will continue this sequence to our Rahul Singh as well. He is an entrepreneur, right? So basically, he has a team he employs, and if he finds one of his guys working with a competitor, competitor, uh, digital marketing company, or taking up some some projects that is related to his interest, so Rahul, how do you how would you handle that, or would you allow that? And what's your perspective of it? See, in today's world where, where data has been democratized, where people have uh, uh, seen the perks of working from home, or when people are looking for hybrid uh, working environment, it's practically very difficult to stop what you have been saying. So, so like in our organization, if somebody is working uh, with us, and again, uh, simultaneously picking up project is practically very difficult to track. So, as an organization, the whole idea should be when you are employing somebody, you should tax it with the amount of work which is needs to be delivered. Rather than counting the number of hours he is, he is delivering, you should be uh, judging that person based on the work which has been assigned to him. So, like if I speak about my organization, what we do, we in German normally tax people about the work which has been given to them. So, if, if, if a work is completed in one hour, we don't mind if we do some, some, some kind of work. As long as my work is getting done, we are really not bothered about what he is doing apart from the job. Uh, job. And, it, and it has become practically, even the bigger companies like Infosys and PCS have spoken about it, that their employees have started more money. So, they also have realized it's practically impossible to stop this thing. And as an entrepreneur, we also feel like that, as long as my work is getting done, we should not be bothered whether somebody is taking a project simultaneously. So that's my view. Definitely, definitely. So uh, if you are considering moonlighting, as we call it, you should, if you are employed somewhere, you should be able to learn the contracts that are given to you. You should deliver your deliverables and you should make sure that the guy who is paying your bills on a regular basis, they are not suffering the consequences. Rest. If that is aligning to your ethics, if it's aligning to the cultural ethics and the organization ethics, you can go beyond and go for some sort of jobs that can earn you extra funds. Sure. The problem is basically in most cases you will find that there are contracts that this allows to it. <laughs> okay, so uh, you need to read your contracts properly and if you are found that you are dis uh, like disobeying the contract, you may get fired. So keep in mind that thing. And that is also in freelancing as well. Freelancing will also have NDA. Definitely, definitely. They do have NDA. Yes, freelancing. If you are so, getting good projects, you might have an NDA with a non-compete clause in that. So, so I just like to add what the test has been saying. So what, what should be a balance approach is, as long as for your first uh, work should be, whatever work has been assigned as part of his job, you should dedicately complete that work and if your contract allows that you are free to do moonlighting or you can pick up plans uh, <coughs> and this thing. But you should, as an employee, you should be first dedicated to your organization. If at all you get work, if you have, at all your uh, say agreement permit, then you can perform uh, moonlighting of your achievement in your That's great. So, coming to the next point, for example, these young crowds or maybe some are in the job, some are already doing freelancing. So this question is particularly for uh, uh, Rahul that these guys, this mixed crowd, for a, from any of the segment I am talking about, freelancing or a job or a fresh graduate, how should they pursue or look at entrepreneurship? Should they first go for a job or they should go for freelancing for experience? then go for a job and then go for entrepreneurship or how do you think a fresh graduate's uh, cycle, life cycle should be regarding entrepreneurship? So if I can talk about the life cycle, I think the cycle starts with job. So uh, whatever skills you have, whatever degree you should, you should have, the first thing that you should do is to either you do an internship or you 
पिक अप फुल टाइम जॉब लर्न दी फ्लिक्स ऑफ दी ट्रेड व्हाट एवर यू गो देयर आप जिस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में हो जे ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में आचो ओखाने काज करो लर्न दी फ्लिक्स ऑफ दी ट्रेड लर्न फ्रॉम योर सीनियर लर्न फ्रॉम योर मेंटर्स व्हेन यू एक्वायर अ पर्टिकुलर स्किल व्हेन यू थिंक ओके आई हैव टू टेक 3 4 2 इयर्स इन इन अ पर्टिकुलर जॉब यू हैव लर्न समथिंग देन यू ग्रेजुअली मूव ऑन टू फ्रीलांसिंग यू कैन स्टार्ट पिकिंग अप प्रोजेक्ट्स व्हाई आई एम सेइंग कि आफ्टर जॉब यू शुड मूव इन टू फ्रीलांसिंग बिकॉज़ when you are doing job you are only doing one part of the uh, say the business you are only uh, getting your skill employed but when you move to freelancing then perhaps you also have to start uh, talking with the clients so first you look at doing job then you move to freelancing and then when you have some set of clients with you like we have already started making same amount of money which you have been making when you are doing a full time job then you start considering moving to entrepreneurship because if i have to tell you entrepreneurship is the most difficult job bahar se dikhta hai it's very flexible jitna ghanta kaam karna hai karo but trust me entrepreneurship is a 24 into 7 job like if you are working some somewhere you have monday to friday 10 to 6 aur aap freelancing ka to apna kaam bhi khatam ho gaya but when you are into a entrepreneurship you have to think about the people who are walking around with you you not only have to foot your own bills you also have to foot your foot somebody else's bill so first pick up a job learn the tricks of the trade then move on to a freelancing kind of assignment when you start picking a freelancing project and when you have ample amount of projects in your head then perhaps you can start building up teams and you can move to entrepreneurship so i i would like i says people to follow that chronology job freelancing and then entrepreneurship right great so one more question this is my personal question to you there is a, a certain thin line between business and entrepreneurship like a lot of people are called businessmen some people are called entrepreneurs what is the exact difference between entrepreneurship and being a businessman see for for me uh, both entrepreneurship and business is more or less same in recent time in the clients uh, you would know how to get clients because uh, you create a, a network when you start freelancing you start getting connected to one client and you get reference to some other client and that makes a whole network for you so definitely you can easily transition to entrepreneurship if you are planning to do so so you can uh, get clients you can talk to them and they can work for you to get projects that's one advantage of being a freelancer and transitioning to entrepreneurship but uh, again that is uh, about if, if if you have any uh, like rahul said if you have any uh, specific problem that you want to point to that how it gets easier for freelancing then i can consider that yes sir <coughs> so in yes I have actually at one given point of time I have been a freelancer that was in the early college days I have transitioned and I had a lot of freelancing friends who are still doing freelancing the one significant difference like what makes you go from a freelancer to an entrepreneur is how you hire people most of these folks right I still remember there was a conversation with one of a very he is very good in freelancing he is doing very good he charges 80 dollars an hour or something like that so he said a very simple thing right hey why don't you hire freshers right uh, for getting started and you pay them 4000 5000 rupees and you get started that was the most terrible idea because the first day, people that you hire should be experienced folks not freshers so that is where most of the freelancers struggle in order how to manage people and how to hire the right folks so that is where things get stopped in right. most cases that's why people don't transition Right. Yeah. Just to add to what Arun said, it's always not necessary for a person to transition from a freelancer to a entrepreneur. Right. If somebody is charging as he is saying eighty dollars a hour, right. so he would not try to move to an entrepreneurship role because he knows the kind of money which I am making. I I don't want to have an asset of hiring people, training people. So it all is very subjective. People to people is not necessary. If somebody doing freelancing, then you want to move into entrepreneurship. Okay, brother, if I'm wrong. See, uh, first thing I would like to say also, hiring people is like uh, it's kind of what do you need? It depends on you. <laughs> so if you are starting, you have if you have a client who wants to start with a project and you 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 
know that you have the time to train a fresher, definitely you can go for it and you hire freshers. But if, if it's a mature project, there is a huge amount of attrition that people don't consider, right? When freelancers are getting into, they don't consider what is the cap, what is the customer acquisition cost because they are doing everything themselves. Then they don't consider, right, uh, like what is the like amount of money that will take to hire an individual and train an individual. So if you are training somebody for three months and then leaving after six, seven months, that's a waste of money and waste of time. See, that's what I've yeah, seen. That all depends. So you, you need to negotiate with your client. You need to negotiate to the client that you are going to hire some pressure, you need to pay for that. So then you should be starting on something. <laughs> so that is, see, you cannot pay it from your pocket. So everything, every burden that costs you has to be put on the client because it's ultimately his project. Yeah. So, I have another point as well. I mean, like, consider you hire a pressure in this case. So let's say you are building something very significant. As a fresher, how much knowledge will that person have? If you're so I have seen freelancers who are actually experienced freelancers. So if you are trying to, let's say entrepreneurship always works on an idea where you want to expand scalability. I don't always think that as pressure with starting a job or just starting to freelance, that person will have all the scenarios in mind which could stretch to scalability. So he might write something or he might just do something that breaks at a particular scale. So, that should not be done as well. There are two things. One is relying on them and another is training them. So, if you are relying that you are uh, giving them a job that breaks your schedule project, then you are doing a wrong thing then. Because he is a fresher, he has just come out of his college and he is just trying to acquire the knowledge. So, you should be treating him as a fresher. That is actually the loophole that we get into. Ultimately, it's not reducing your work hours. That's the objective of it. It will not. It will not. It's going to increase your work hours yes. for the time being. Like for and three months, for four months, you will train them. Uh, how many students do you have? Yeah. Students. Only a few. Okay. So when these students will get out of their college, they, are, they will be looking for a job. And being a professional, being having an experience in the industry, it's our responsibility to train them. Right. So that, that's, that, that's our responsibility. Definitely. So expecting uh, revenue from them would be bad for at least six months. So for at least six months they need to be trained. They need to understand what the industry expects from them. Uh, and after six months they are going to turn into revenue for you. Definitely. Thank you. One, 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 one more thing to add. So you know what? I have a very good experience with freshers. They are the most uh, like excited people in the in the companies, they want to do the job. So that's the best thing of hiring freshers. Freshers, right? Yes, definitely. Uh, when you hire freshers, there are pros and cons, and uh, we are going to take the question in few minutes, sir. Okay. So before concluding this session, this uh, I have one last question to everyone sitting in here. If someone comes to you person comes to you as a uh, willingness to become a freelancer or a willingness to become a, 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 get to get into a job or a willingness to be an entrepreneur what are the questions individually you would ask the person first uh, Arunda, if someone wants to be a freelancer what suggestions would you give him if someone wants to come to you and ask for uh, uh, actually, uh, so you want me to tell somebody how to become a freelancer? Yes, what are the suggestions? Or, you, or, or you want to tell me that how I, why, why I would hire him? No, so what? No. So how to become a freelancer? Right. So, uh, see, it's uh, like you said, uh, leap of faith. So it's kind of that if you are uh, if you are working for some company and you want to become a freelancer, it needs a bit of financial stability, then only you can go for it. And if you are doing it from right from your when you started with your college, then I think uh, it's, it's easy. But if you already are in job, you have got responsibilities for uh, feeding your dependents, then it's uh, a bit tr tr tricky to get into freelancing. So I myself tried three times, then only I became a freelancer. <laughs> so it's any problem. So what you should do when you are working or uh, you already are stable or you are in college, 
So start building your profile. Where? On uh, like GitHub, on uh, LinkedIn, or the places where people will like to see developers, if you are trying to become a developer. So GitHub is one place where you can create hobby projects, you can publish it there, and wherever you are going for a freelancing project, so people would like to, you can just reference them that this is what I created already. So you get the chances of getting hired by the client easily. Because when you get a project on any freelancing website, so you will see that there are a number of bits coming on it. And there will be experienced people as well as the presses. So the problem is that uh, when you are presser, you don't have the portfolio to showcase. So you can build the portfolio starting from your college itself, or when you are working as a professional to hobby projects, not uh, economical, like, you know, not monetary profiting projects, but they are hobby projects. And then you can create a portfolio and create network with your uh, everyone. Like when you are contributing to a open source project, create network with the people there. They will bring in projects for you. So these are few things that you can consider when you are trying to become a freelancer. Thank you, Arunda. Over to Vidisha. So, for me, anyone who comes and asks that how do I get into a good organization, how do I get into a job, the first thing is start coding, of course, obviously. <laughs> but the uh, more important thing over here is it's wrong to say that, hey, just because I'm starting, I don't have a code for you. Build interesting projects, showcase it to the world, what you can be, what potential you have. That will make you stand out. And um, I think a lot of people here who have cracked or who are trying to crack jobs, they do know the importance of DS algo when it comes to engineering. So please lead code. Lead code as much as you want to. Have some time, do lead code. As he said, build up a profile, go to GitHub and start contributing. I mean, there are a lot of ways if you really want to. And most importantly, if you know, like for me, I knew that I didn't want to get into front-end development. I, my focus was only that, but I also did other stuff so that if a question was asked from there, I was able to answer. So be confident, have enough knowledge in whatever you are doing, learn your basics properly, and uh, yeah, you will be able to practice. Thank you, Mr. And over to See, if you want to move into a professorship role, the first quality that everyone should have is perseverance. Like, you should be able to do the same job, same work day in the year. 24 into 7, 365 days. You will fail, again you have to get up, you will fail, again you have to get up. If you have business, you have to have a thick skin. You will see failures, but again you have to stand from that failures. That is number one quality that you should have. You should be able to do the same kind of job for next 3-4 years. You should not think, if I start my business or I will become an entrepreneur and in 6 months, 1 year span of time, I will see money. That is very rare. So if you want to be a successful in entrepreneurship role, you have to be very patient, you have to have perseverance, which will last for at least 2-3 years. The second quality that you should build up is, you should build your personal brand. So when you move to an entrepreneurship role, why should people give you business? Say, in, in my last organization where I worked, it was a Fortune 500 company. When I moved to an entrepreneurship role, I was not getting any projects. Then I realized people know me, Rahul Singh, that I used to work with so and so company. People don't know me. So if you want to move up to an entrepreneurship role, you start building a personal brand. How, how you should build a personal brand is to network with like minded people, attend workshops like this, events like this. Interact with the people who are into the community, the startup community, the business community. The more you network, the more personal brand you will. Start being visible. Attend events, attend seminars. So these are the two qualities which I will suggest. You should be having a great amount of perseverance and you should be having a personal brand. If you have these two qualities, then you should consider moving. And again, I, I always follow that chronology. Job, freelancing and entrepreneurship. This has a higher probability of success. Again, you can start off even without having a job or a freelancing, but the probability of getting success is higher if you move from job to freelancing to an entrepreneurship. Thank you, Rahul. That was uh, really insightful uh, to know the, uh, the pathway, the, uh, the qualities that everyone should have, whether they want to consider 
freelancing whether they want to go for a job like a lot of people are students over here a lot of people are freelancers they might want to move on to the next phase of their life they should have the qualities that he mentioned make sure you uh, make yourself visible make sure you have clear mindset about each and every segment you are you are going to go to each and every one has its pros and cons and definitely not everything that glitters is gold okay so it has their ups and downs you must know that before uh, moving into anything and definitely i would recommend if you want to go in any of these segments please do consult or grab those people over to lunch that 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 will be the best networking you can ever get before concluding this session i would like to i uh, we have uh, maybe a few ones to one question we can uh, have one or two questions uh, from the audience uh, yes please uh, first of all i am thanking you uh, after the discussion i gained a lot of knowledge from you uh, i mean you know english bhalo bolte parbo na tabe chesta korchi bangla te bolo na Uh, freelancer, I think uh, freelancer never be free, or if fresher or uh, experienced. I am 46 years uh, old. No, I want to be a freelancer. Uh, before six month, I इसे तो वो पुरी चीज़ है. Through the Facebook ad, उनका स्टिकर फ्रीलांसिंग शिकार शुरू करी. किंतु ये ना कि आमी होय तो कुछ और बुर्ती जेते पड़ता हूँ. फ्री <laughs> होते <laughs> <laughs> profile that you choose but uh, definitely uh, let me tell you the benefits uh, right see it's not like that the client wants to uh, like like you said that they want to expect your <laughs> all the time from from you it's like uh, you need to build a good relationship with your client see i have a client who who is working for me at least for 6 years and even from the beginning days when i started working as a freelancer so this depends on the how uh, good relationship you build with your client and uh, for the time that you are considering that i don't get enough time so i think the best option if you want to visit around the world and uh, do your work as well is freelancing a businessman cannot do it a job uh, a person in job cannot do it the only thing is that you need to dedicate your uh, dedicate your hours that is for the client so if you have dedicated a 8 hours work for your client you need to dedicate that they are not concerned about whether you are dedicating dedicating it from kolkata or you are in new york so so it's uh, see the experience could be different for say, like job is not satisfactory for everyone so so could be the freelancing so i agree with you but actually that is the issue uh, i like it very much because amar eta mone hoy ki bolo ekane एडिटिंग भलो करते ग्राफिक डिजाइनिंग मोटामोटी जानी क्योंकि यो आगे जो जब कर मैथमेटिक्स टीचार फर द कम्पिटिव एक्सामेशन क्योंकि पढ़ाते गए जैसे पढ़ा अतना जो सरकम ब्रांडिंग नहीं चाहिए सब समय बड़ो बड़ा समस्या गोगे खुद जात क्योंकि भिडियो एडिटिंग जे इमेज एडिटिंग वन क्वेश्चन सो व्हाट इज योर प्रोफेशनलिज्म लाइक यू आर अ टीचर और यू आर अ वीडियो एडिटर 
I am a teacher, but I like. I am a teacher. I like to and, and, and you like to do video editing. Video editing, but so you are doing freelancing in video editing. Yeah, yeah. Video editing and image editing and. So I I, I will say that uh, I don't know what to say. See, this kind of job obviously needs to be to you to be present at the location where you are doing it. So this can never be. Uh, this requires you at the at the place where you want to work. Sir, I have a 6th one. We are really short of time. So okay. you can uh, connect with We Arun. can connect with Arun over lunch. We have one more question category. Okay. So, only one. one. Only one. Okay. The, that person over... Uh, Somebody can pass on the mic. Give it to me. Give it to So, one, one thing that I like to suggest, if you want to have a co-founder, stay away from your family. Don't make any of it from your family as a co-founder. Because you don't have business, you don't have your family. So, more strict, no, no. This is my personal, in my personal time, I have seen success. See, if you want to look out for co-founders, that's a very pertinent question. Because when you are starting up, you cannot do everything on yourself. You see most of the startups or, or the new age businesses, they have co-founders. There is logic to it. So if you, if, if there is an investor, if I want to invest in a company, I will rather try to diversify my risk if I see there are three co-founders. Because when you have a single co-founder company, everything you have to do about it with yourself. When you have multiple co-founders, you can distribute your job. So how to go about finding for the right co-founder is to Again, go to various networking mm -hmm. events, attend seminars, where like-minded people you think will be visiting. Interact with people, find out their interests. Don't only look at domain expertise. Because the first characteristic that you want in your co-founder is whether you are compatible with that particular person or not. So after personal compatibility with that co-founder is number one tick mark that you should look at. Rather than looking at the uh, domain expertise, you consider whether you are compatible with that co-founder. If, if you find, okay, your nature, your characteristics matches with that co-founder, then you start uh, ticking the other boxes. Whether he has the right domain expertise. Say if you are from the development side, so you want somebody who is from uh, our business development, so that he can bring in that uh, expertise to you. Or if you are looking for a finance co-founder, whether he has an expertise or not. So these are some ways where you can go and look out for co-founders. And as, as I said, family no. Again, I also say don't work with your friends because not all friends are not the business. So look out for people who are neutral. So there you have much more higher compatibility. I hope that answers. Definitely, definitely that answers. And uh, yes, look out for people here. So you are here for networking, look out for people here. Right. So yes, I want to say something. Who became a bank? Sugar. Sugar. Because it is the cosmetics company. Vinita Singh and Kushi Mukherjee. There are always exceptions. <laughs> so there are there are husband and wife who don't fight, but maximum <laughs> husband and wife. So the exceptions are there. That was a really good question. Uh, I agree. Sir, uh, actually, uh, we, so are we, are, we are short of time. Short so of during time. the lunch, we will be available so we can interact.